Here's some more useful information. I'm attempting to find out at what resistance the temperature gauge in the Z car reads midpoint on the temperature gauge. So I'm using this small rheostat to adjust the uh, resistance between the lead, which is there, to ground. I'm running it through a meter just to see what kind of current it pulls. I originally had my digital meter in there, but it was freaking out, and I can see why. I don't know if this is uh, something with the with the with the way the strip works and the gauge, or why it would be oscillating like that. Maybe there's some kind of a um, so I guess maybe something to do with the way the gauge is built. I don't know why it would do this under any other circumstance. But I'm going to take the meter out of the circuit here just a minute because there's no for as far as setting that resist that pot that that rheostat. I want it to be, uh, you know, take this this resistance out of the circuit to make sure I'm getting as close to what I should be reading here to get 185. Let's take a look at the gauge real quick. I think it's a little bit lower than it probably was a minute ago. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit under. I'm going to take the gauge out and again get that set for dead center, and then we'll read the resistance. So. Hang with me, it's easier just to do this like this rather than trying to uh, stop and edit these things. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this pot right in series, make sure it doesn't short out, everything looks good. Let's go see if that brings that meter back up to center. Okay, so I'm waiting for that to come up now. When I disconnected, it came out. So. I don't know. This might take a little bit, so I'll stop this video, set this, and then continue. I switched to a different pot. That's a, uh, a 60 ohm uh, rheostat or pot. I don't know which one that is. It might have three terminals. Anyway, I went to 60 ohms because it gave me a little bit better resolution on the adjustment, plus this little plastic knob made it easier. I tweaked it. I read it. That's right at 40. That's right set right at 40 ohms. I read that with a digital uh, meter because it's a little more accurate than trying to read off the analog sometimes. Sometimes I like the digitals for reading exact low values. I prefer analogs when I'm trying to get a feel for what's going on because it doesn't the meter the, the movement of the needle can tell you a lot about things that the digital readout simply can't. So anyway, 40 ohms connecting to the uh, cable harness, the, engine, the the harness that drives the uh, temperature gauge connect to the ground and make sure I had good solid connections although you know uh, that's always iffy. I did check the current it's only about a I think about a hundred milliamps so I'm not too worried about the light gauge wiring I'm using there I can't imagine being pulling a lot of current and as you can see the temperature gauge is right dead center so 40 ohms is where you want to be at 185 F on the uh, temperature sending unit so the next part of the process will be uh, the hard part which will be, I'm going to want to remove that temperature sending unit, which is a pain. I'll probably have to remove that top hose at the very least so I get better access to it. We'll put that into a pan of water. I'll get an accurate thermometer on it. We'll heat it up to 185 degrees, and we'll see if it's 40 ohms. If it is, then every, this, everything's working right as far as the sending unit is. If it's not, then uh, that has to be looked into. And I don't know if it's going to be, um, I presume, the sending unit is where the issue is going to be. I can't imagine the gauge or the wiring harness being an issue, but I guess it's possible. Anyway, more later.